Besides the story of Saul and Jehu, there's another great story described in the book of Kings of the king Ahab, who has it all, but he still desires a plot of one of the citizens of Jezreel whose name was Navot. He wants his vineyard. And Navot replies, I cannot sell my uh, family property. And the Bible tells us that Ahab is really upset and he goes to bed and his wife, the foreign queen Jezebel, plots how to get that property. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to a very special clip from the Watchmen TV show on TBN. If you love the Watchmen newscast here on YouTube, you will love our weekly show on TBN airing every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time and Fridays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We are on the ground in Israel and points beyond throughout the Middle East every week, so be sure to tune in. And this week, we've got a clip from the show to give you a preview of what you can expect. This is one of the greatest, I guess, unexcavated, if that's a word, archaeological sites or regions in all of the land of Israel. I'm talking about Israel's ancient Jezreel Valley. You've got the story of Ahab, Jehu, Jezebel, and, and in the future, Armageddon, all in that Jezreel Valley region. And yet, as our good friend Danny the Digger Herman tells us, it, is, it has largely not been excavated by Israeli archaeologists yet. Who knows what they will find in this beautiful area rich in biblical history. Take a look. Danny the Digger Herman, look at this view, the Jezreel Valley. Man, we've been wanting to come here for a while. This is a site of significant archeological and biblical history and activity. Why is this place so important? Yes, we are at the top of Tel Jezreel. Jezreel is the name both of the valley and the mound here in the back where its Acropolis used to be the palace of one of the most significant kings in the Israelite empire, in the Israelite kingdom, King Ahab. The notorious yes. King Ahab. Okay, we're talking about the period after the split of the tribes of the north from Jerusalem, from Judea, and they established an independent kingdom whose capital is in Samaria. The Samaria mountains are behind us, but this is like the northern frontier where you have two significant sites, Megiddo, and Jezreel. And both are monitoring the Jezreel Valley, a significant path that connects this region with the Galilee, the Golan Heights, towards Damascus, Mesopotamia, the Assyrian Empire. It's all there. And by the way, Megiddo, another name would be? Armageddon. Armageddon. Megiddo is also very famous for its future, yes. its future role by the New Testament. But here it's a site that is solely devoted to Old Testament events. And two pivotal events happen here in the days of the Old Testament. The first of them, the book of Samuel, the time of Saul, when he is king and he is threatened by the Philistines. So the book of Samuel tells us of his forces gathering at the spring of Jezreel, Eric. It's down there in the valley, while the Philistines are campaigning against this region. And Saul is trying to tempt them to battle him up here on the Gilboa Mountains. They have chariots, but he hopes that on the mountainous terrain, their chariots won't give them the benefit, that benefit, yeah. that advantage. Right. Does it work? Not we really. We know that it does not. It doesn't end very well for King Saul and his son Jonathan, David's best friend, as we read in the Bible, what happens at the hands of the Philistines? They are defeated. And, and Saul actually kills himself in shame. And the Philistines end up taking his body and his sons and hang them on the walls of Bet Shean, which yes. we also covered in one of the episodes. Yes, we did. An amazing place and hung as a message, I guess, to all the Israelites from the Philistines, yes. King Saul's body. So that's one a major event where the regime changes from the house of Saul to the house of David. King David. But there's another military change that happens here centuries later in the time of the Israelite kingdom, when the king is Jehoram, 
who is battling against Hazael, the king of Aram, and he is also defeated. But he's not killed, he's just wounded. And he returns to Jezreel to recover. And his friend, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Judah, Ahaziah, comes to visit him. But the Israelite general, Jehu, is approaching with his army, and he kills them both. As you said, a military coup. Yes. The kingdom overthrown by Jehu. And it also happened here. So tell Jezreel, which has not been excavated very much, to say the least, only a corner of the royal palace here has been discovered so far. There's really a lot more work that can be done here. Yeah. It's actually a major, major site in biblical history. Indeed, Danny, and kind of a, an underrated site, so to speak. Like yes. you said, not a lot of excavations done here. but Not so a lot of visitors also. No, so yeah. I'm so excited that we're here. I think of Jehu, who you mentioned in the Bible says he was riding furiously on his chariot on the way to conduct that overthrow, that military coup. One more thing before we move on to the next incredible site you're going to show us. Beautiful here. Lush is the word that comes to mind yes. when I look out and see the green of the Jezreel Valley. Yes. The summers here are pretty hot. <laughs> yes. And I know because I grew up in this area, but the winters here are just beautiful. And especially the early spring, the almond trees have just begun blooming. Yeah. My son, we named him after that tree. And Shaked. Shaked. Shaked is almond in Hebrew. And he's a good kid, by the way. I've met him. Very good. Takes after his father. Hey, this is a great start, but there's a lot more to see here in the Jezreel yes. Valley. Where are we going next? And there's a special site that relates to an amazing story that the Bible also records, and that is the story of Ahab and Navot, the owner of a vineyard. Yes. The king and an owner of a vineyard. And the king has everything, but it's not enough for him. He wants also Navot's plot, okay? And we actually do have here a vineyard down at the slope here. Let me show you this. Let's go. Danny, here we are. The biblical history of the Jezreel Valley continues, and we're moving on now to 1 Kings and 2 Kings. Some very significant events unfolded right around where we're standing right now. Tell us about it. Yes. Besides the story of Saul and Jehu, there's another great story described in the book of Kings of the king Ahab, who has it all, but he still desires a plot of one of the citizens of Jezreel, whose name was Navot. He wants his vineyard. And Avot replies, I cannot sell my uh, family property. And the Bible tells us that Ahab is really upset and he goes to bed and his wife, the foreign queen Jezebel, plots how to get that property. She says, are you not the king? Yeah. You can take that vineyard for yourself. Yes, and since he doesn't do this, she will. She will plot the following conspiracy. She will fake that Navot cursed the gods of Israel. She bribes people to fake a testimony on this, and then she accuses him of doing the worst, defiling the God Almighty. So he's sentenced and he's put to death. Stoned. He's stoned, and now the king gets the plot of the person who was executed. An innocent man killed by yes. Ahab and Jezebel. But one person is aware of this deception, Elijah. And he's really, really upset, and he tells Jezebel, you will pay for this. Your husband will die, and so will you. And the place where the dogs licked the blood of Navot and his execution site, the same place your blood will be licked by dogs as well. And Ahab indeed dies shortly after in a battle against the Aramites. Not far from here. Okay, and the military coup by Jehu, remember, where he kills Yoram, Ahab's son. And he runs and catches Ahaziah in Bet Hagan, in today's Jenin, not too far away from here. And he kills him as well. He now comes back to Jezreel to get even with Jezebel. And she knows her end is coming soon. She goes up to the tower and through the window she makes some sort of a sarcastic comment. But Joe is not excited. He has her thrown off the window. And then uh, horses step over her body. And guess what? Dogs are licking her blood. Just Elijah's that. prophecy is fulfilled. What a way to go for Jezebel who 
sowed a lot of evil, indeed, uh, as the Bible describes. Indeed. Jehu becomes king. And we are standing on top of a white mosaic floor of a wine press, an ancient wine press, Eric. For all I know, Navot's vineyard may have been right here. Who knows? I cannot prove it, but it is a possibility. We're in the Jezreel Valley. Yes. And to this day, you have vineyards as well, but this is an ancient one. This is where they stepped on the grapes and then the liquids would accumulate in the vat and then it would be taken in jars to be fermented and you've got good Jezreel wine. Yes, you do. Hey, this is a vast area, Danny, the Jezreel Valley. Why hasn't it been excavated more? The corner of Ahav's palace or his Acropolis has been excavated by Professor Usishkin, but it's just a corner. There's a lot more that still could be done here. You yeah. know, in Megiddo, the neighboring site, already in the 1930s, the Americans have peeled off all of the top layers and there's so much to see there. Here, the site is still waiting for its proper archeological expedition to expose much more. Who knows, we might find the tower. We might find Ahab's palace. Who knows what else could be found at this site. Well, Danny the Digger, we know you will be digging. You're <laughs> on the case. And if anyone finds it, we know you will be there. And we will be there with you also. As always, Danny the Digger Herman, thanks so much, my friend. It was great. My pleasure, my pleasure. Hey, everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.